Well, hello and welcome to the show. I'm so glad you've joined us this week. If you remember last week, we spent quite a bit of time getting Rumpelstiltskin in and out of the trailer comfortably. This week, we're gonna be talking with Kiri and helping her deal with her issue of getting Rumpelstiltskin in and out of the trailer. Last week, we dealt with his issues. This week, it's hers. That's coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. And mark it. Gonna take a ride on one true So Kerry, last week we spent a lot of time doing the groundwork over here and getting him to be more respectful to my body and understanding that the trailer was actually the place to rest, okay? So that's what we did on last week's show. Now, reality is that was only a few minutes ago. So he's still kind of feeling like he'd like a little bit of a rest. We don't want to lose that. We want to keep that going forward, okay? So part two to this lesson is to get better in the trailer. We want you and him to get better together. What I noticed when I watched you load in the trailer is you walked up and you stepped into the trailer and when he kind of said no, you instantly started pulling. When you pull on a horse's head in the trailer, what happens is you lift their chin. Okay, automatically, as you lift their chin, you take their eyes off the floor. And if they're already nervous about stepping in the trailer, it is almost a guarantee they're not going to. It stops them cold in their tracks, okay? So today what I want you to do is mimic what I did last in the last show. I want you to walk up to that trailer. You're gonna hold the little whip in your hand, but you don't do much with it. It's just there, okay? Mm -hmm. You're going to point him into the trailer. Keep your lead rope kind of short. What I always do is I kind of put my thumb through the center of that loop. That way, if he jumps away from me, I can drop the lead rope and I've still got a hold of him here, okay? So I keep my thumb kind of in that loop, but now my lead rope is short enough that I can point him into the trailer, okay? If he says no, I'm gonna reach up with this hand and just tap him on the hip. Now, timing. Timing is everything, okay? Uh, there are three pieces of horsemanship that I think are incredibly important. Timing, body positioning, and balance. Today, you don't have to worry about balance, but you are gonna have to worry about body positioning and timing. So when you go to the trailer, you want your body position to be kind of parallel to his head. You wanna stand and face him and point him into the trailer and send him. But as he commits, send him into the trailer and you stay out of the trailer mm -hmm. until you're comfortable sending him in. So that means you're gonna to have to hold onto that lead rope and he's gonna stop and turn around, okay? That's okay. Just hold the lead rope and ask him to turn around towards you. Stand off to the side of the back of the trailer. So let me show you what I want. Come on over here, stand right here so you can watch. Okay, so I'm gonna stand here and send him in. And then just turn him around and let him stand there for now, okay? I want you to do this a couple of times till you're comfortable sending him in and out of the trailer. There's no sense of you trying to walk into that trailer and getting in a wreck until we can just send him in comfortably, okay? So lead him back out. All right, now, trailer loading, come back over here, actually starts in the barn, okay? It starts before you halter your horse. Here's what happens to you. I'm gonna guess I'm pretty close to this. You walk into the barn, you have to take this horse somewhere. You know you have to get him in the trailer. By the time you are putting the halter on this horse, you are already dreading the trailer. You are already going, oh, I know we're gonna fight over that trailer. We always fight over getting in the trailer. Today, I don't want any of that. Today, I want you to say, you know what? We're getting in the trailer. We are going to the trailer and getting in, okay? So you're gonna take a hold of the lead rope, walk over there confidently, point him in, and send him on into the trailer. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Just gotta fix the rope. Get that where you're comfortable with it. So it's like you hold it. Um, okay, so give me your right hand. Hold on. Now you got me, there we go. So I leave the tail sticking out the back, my thumb, so that goes between my thumb and forefinger, and my whole hand grips that lead rope. Okay. Then if I need to, I can adjust it any way that I want. Okay, so that's your right hand. Ra nope. Oh, okay. There you go. Got it. All right. Come on, boy. You're headed right to the trailer and right in. Oh. Oh. Now, how much easier was that? Very easy. Woo. Okay. Now, 
only mistake that you made is you didn't clearly ask him to come out. You kind of both said maybe we should come out right now. I want you to say Rumpelstiltskin. Stay in the trailer or Rumpelstiltskin, come out of the trailer. All right. Okay? Go ahead and try that again. Send him back in there. Okay, there you go. Now bring him out of the trailer. Come on. There you go. Walk up away from the trailer 10 feet, turn around and walk back. And this time, you're going to walk back and you're going to step right into the trailer. Okay, now just back him out quietly, easy. Don't pull on his head. Stop your body. Now, how nice was that? Nice. That was pretty nice, wasn't it? All right, so we're, we're talking 25 minutes of just changing sort of the way we do things a little bit, and it brings us back to a situation where we actually have control again. Okay, all right, I want you, now, the only mistake I saw you make, you got a touch nervous up there in the front when you first started to back him up. Mm -hmm. Remember, you're in downtown, very large city in the USA, the worst part of town, the worst part of crime in that town, it's midnight, okay? You're walking down this dark alleyway, but you have three big cops with you. In fact, you have the three best cops that city has, and their job is to protect you, okay? So you're kind of like, hey, this could kind of be cool, right? Yeah, I wonder what would happen if somebody tried to mug me right now. <laughs> and about the time you get that thought through your head, all three cops go, uh-oh, this ain't good. What happens to your emotions? You get nervous and you... You're going to get nervous. Like, I'm going to run. I'm going to be like, well, I'm going to be back in the car, boys, with the doors locked. See you when you get there, right? Okay, I'm gonna get nervous. That's exactly what happens to the horse when you have him in a situation and you say, uh-oh. So when you get him up in the front of that trailer and you're like, uh oh boy, instantly you could see it in him. Instantly his head came up and he started looking out of both corners of both eyes backwards, okay? So I want you to go back in there and I want you to just be as relaxed as you'd be at an afternoon tea party. Got it. All right, good job, Carrie, load him up. Step. Oh. Oh. Perfect. Good boy. Keep his head straight and then just back him out quietly. There you go. Step. Excellent. Good Excellent. Boy. Now you obviously need to practice this quite a bit over the next three weeks yeah. because you want to be ready to go home when you're ready to go home. You want to load him up and when you get to someplace in Idaho and want to take him out and let him walk around a little bit, you want to be able to do that and, and be comfortable on your trip home. Thank you. Yep, you're very welcome. Um, I'm really excited to be able to work on his trailering. Um, it's been really hard getting him to do it for the past year and I'm really glad that I was able to do this with Ken and learn so much and be able to move forward with it. The first time I was really nervous, I think that was because the first time I did try getting him into the trailer, I. I I pulled too hard and he hit his head on the trailer and I didn't want to do that again. So I got a little nervous when I thought about that. It was really surprising. Like I was super happy about it, but I was like super surprised as well because he's like never calm in a trailer. He's always like kicking and neighing and he hates it. Paige is another one of my apprentices. She's just in here from Michigan. And um, she told me this horse has trouble getting in and out of the trailer as well. So obviously, again, they got the horse here, but it takes kind of an act to get it on the trailer. What I want to do in this, in this lesson is teach you how to use a two-person approach to get the horse on the trailer. Not necessarily teach it to load, but to get the horse consistently jumping on the trailer. Now, there are two ways to do everything. And I learned this a long time ago in my life. You need a safe way to get a horse on the trailer that hasn't been taught so that in emergency situations, you can still get there. That's what this lesson is all about.
Paige, what we're going to do is I'm going to have you just walk up and lead the horse onto the trailer. Okay. okay? Before we do that, I'm going to walk up and open the suicide door. Okay. It's called a suicide door so that you have a way <laughs> out instead of committing suicide by climbing into that tin box without a way out, okay. right? So we're going to just stay right here. I'm going to okay. open that. When you take the two-man approach, you have to be a little more aware of that because you're going to have a person in the trailer with a horse who may not be perfectly calm going in. So you take some precaution to keep yourself safe, okay? So Paige, you've told me she's actually quite good in the trailer. Mm -hmm. She just doesn't want to get in. So mm -hmm. we've got the suicide door open just in case. What I want you to do is walk up, step in the trailer, and expect her to come in. Now, when she fails to come in, all I want you to do, your whole job, is to keep her nose pointed towards the trailer, okay? My job is to motivate. Don't pull. Just like we said in the last horse, if you pull, you elevate their chin, they can't see the floor. The only thing you do is keep her looking in the trailer, okay? Go ahead. Again, this is based on release. And the release is gonna come from me, not Paige. Okay, just go ahead and take her right up on in there. Come on, baby. Good girl. Come on. Good girl. Come on. That's a girl. All right, so at this point, you could wait, and she's probably going to get in. What I'm going to do is have you back her out. Okay. And we're going to ask her again. I'm going to use, I believe you could get her in the trailer. You got her here from Michigan. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is show you what I would do regardless. Okay. okay. So just stand up there, keep her nose forward. And I'm going to add pressure from behind. It quit immediately. As soon as that horse steps forward, release the pressure. That was a little easier than I expected it to be. That's okay. Back her out. When you use that two-person approach, you want to make sure that you, the second person is actually the more experienced. You want the more experienced person handling the motivation. Because if you just get in a wreck back here and just go to whacking on this horse, the wreck's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I want to make sure that I do not stand directly in the line of fire of those back legs, because I am going to get kicked if I do. I want instead, go ahead and step her forward to stand off to the side and just offer that motivation to go in. Now she's very quiet in there. She's a very nice horse. What's happened in the past is she has said, no, I'm not getting on the trailer. It's exactly the same thing that we had with Rumpelstiltskin. This horse is a little bit more willing and the method is quite a lot different. But all you're gonna do is just ask the horse from behind gently to get in. Okay, back her out one more time. Now walk her in about a 10 foot circle. Just walk her in about a 10 or 15 foot circle okay. and bring her back and load her right in the trailer. Okay. And this time I'm gonna stay out of the way because you aren't always gonna have two people with you. And I do wanna encourage the horse to load better. Most loading problems, certainly not all of them. Most loading problems are simply cured when you take away the nervousness in the person handling the horse. When you add confidence to what you're doing, the horse gets in the trailer. They're accustomed to following a confident leader. That's how it works in the herd. They have to follow a confident leader. So if you're approaching the trailer and you're nervous, the horse is gonna be nervous. So let me give you this scenario. Paige is at home. She's getting ready to drive 1,700 miles to attend a three-week apprenticeship program. She's loading the horse on the trailer herself. Do you think she's nervous? Of course she is. She's headed off into the who knows where for who knows how long to do what, who she knows not what. So she's going to be nervous. That's going to translate directly to her horse. Today, she's very relaxed. She did the groundwork with her horse yesterday. The lessons are there. So actually, it's not that big of a deal. It's amazing to me how frequently I see situations where horses end up 
doing something wrong and it's actually a direct result of the handler. It's an absolute direct result of the person handling that horse. Trailer safety is probably the next most important thing. Keeping your horse safe in the trailer, not banging his head like we talked about with Rumpelstiltskin. Tying carefully, tying correctly, tying high. Keeping your horse driving safe so you keep your horse comfortable in the trailer. If you're gonna drive down the road like a race car driver, you're probably in and out of traffic, you're probably gonna have a horse that doesn't like to load. My grandpa maintained the idea that you should take a hot cup of coffee and set it on your dashboard. And it should stay there as long as you're driving hauling livestock. Uh, he, he said repeatedly, drive as if you're hauling a whole entire load of eggs. You, not that you can't get to speed with the traffic, but drive smoothly and carefully. These things are going to keep your horse loading safely much longer. There are lots of methods in the world. You're here to learn mine for the next three weeks. Well, you guys, welcome to the three-week program. We are gonna have so much fun over the next three weeks. You are going to have a life-changing experience. Uh, I hope you came ready to be tired, ready to be sore, ready to learn. We are gonna work exceptionally hard, but we're gonna have a ton of fun. I think um, one of the things that explains this program probably the best is wherever we go, we have fun. We have a good time. 97 to 98% of American horse enthusiasts do this for fun. That means 2% of us have the right to be grumpy because some people don't like their jobs. <laughs> right? No. That's what this is about. I want to send you guys home uh, ready to start your own businesses, ready to increase your business, ready to just enjoy your horse in the backyard, but with a knowledge base that is unparalleled to anything you've ever had. That's, that's our goal. Our goal is to take you from where you are to where you want to go. There are 13 of you here. You're all going to be at different levels. So from where you are to where you want to go is not the same for every single person. So you need to remember during the next three weeks when you look up and you see somebody doing something really cool that you're not doing yet, you'll get there eventually. You're not there yet. Use that as motivation to move forward in your own program. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I hope this helps you, helps your trail riding weekends and keeps the stress out of your trailer loading. Until next week, may God bless the trails you ride. Find out more about Ken McNabb horsemanship at kenmcnabb.com. That one true horse, the perfect partner built to ride. One true horse, a bond that cannot be denied. Search forever just to have the chance to take a ride on one true horse. And go. Well, you guys, welcome to the three week. <laughs> Don't chuckle. <laughs> We're not going to get through this, Michael. <laughs> they can't. You got to watch them. They can't. I'm gonna have to look over their heads.